Okay, there seem to be several videos on YouTube from people glorifying these little Crosley record players. Well, I thought it was time to make a video uh, unglorifying these little Crosley record players. So today we will be comparing this Crosley record player manufactured August 2013 to this old school classroom Newcomb record player from the 60s. First, let's talk about weight. This little Crosley record player weighs about five and a half pounds, where this old Newcomb record player from the 60s weighs a good bit more, probably around 20 pounds. This Crosley record player has a cheap plastic belt-driven turntable, whereas this one has a nice metal turntable. Uh, this one also has the 45 RPM adapter built into the turntable, where this one has a separate adapter, if I can get it out, which that's just something else to get lost. This record player here operates on a 9 volt wall wart, where this one has its own self-contained AC power cord. There again, this is just something else to get lost. Even though this newer player includes a speed of 78 RPM, it does not include the proper 3 mil 78 RPM stylus. At all it has is an LP stylus. And since this is a multi-speed player, it should have a flip-over stylus like this one has. This one, you have one side for LP, or 78, and then the other side for LP. You really can't achieve proper 78 playback with a 0.7 mil LP stylus. You need a 3 mil stylus. Now, they make a 3 mil stylus for this Crosley player, but it's a little bit inconvenient and can sometimes lead to disaster trying to un snap the old needle and pop in a new needle when on this model all you have to do is flip the lever over. Okay, on this model we have controls for volume, bass, and treble. This model doesn't even have a tone control. And this model has a cheap plastic tone arm. This old model has a nice metal tone arm. Now this model here is a stereo model, but with two small, what, two-inch speakers placed so close together inside of the cabinet, you're not going to get much stereo separation, and the fidelity will really not be that good. This old model, obviously, is a mono player, but his, it has a nice six-by-nine-inch speaker in it. It includes a whizzer cone for much better fidelity than this thing over here. Okay, we've now looked at the outward aspects of these two players. Now let's open them up, and that will be a very eye-opening experience for you. Oh, and did I mention that this one is made in China, while this one was made in the good old United States of America? And look at the little tiny screws that hold the new one together. Here's the underside of the new one. Notice the all-plastic turntable mechanism with the little cheap DC drive motor that is prone to failure on these. And In fact, already one of the plastic mounting brackets that holds the turntable to this little cheap fiber motor board has already broken. Here's the little amplifier module. just has a little 8-pin integrated circuit for the power output stage. And notice the whole little board is held in place by hot glue. Very classy, isn't it? And look at these two little cheap speakers in here. I've seen little transistor radios with better quality speakers. And here's the rear jack panel that contain the RCA line out jacks and the auxiliary input jack. Notice all of the hot glue holding those jacks in place. Yeah, get a good look there at the quality workmanship of this junkly record player. Okay, you've about all you've about seen what all there is to see of this piece of junk. 
Now, would you like to see the inside of a well-built phonograph? Here's the inside of the Newcomb record player. As you can see, this is much better built than the Crosley. In fact, this is all metal construction with a nice AC motor here. In fact, these AC motors, usually the only maintenance they need is cleaning and lubrication. Other than that, they'll usually run from now on. Here's the nice tube amplifier that uses a 6BQ5 output tube. It's even fuse protected. And unlike the Crosley with its little cheap belt driven turntable, this uses an idler wheel driven turntable. In fact, I've fixed many of these school record players. Usually, all they need is cleaning and lubrication and maybe a new idler wheel, and they're good to go for another 50 years and by the way this is a 1964 model and here's the speaker in the Newcomb record player as you can see a nice 6x9 speaker they even have it mounted on a spring loaded sound board and the reason they did that was to help prevent feedback from the speaker to the cartridge and it also helps improve the bass response a little bit Okay, we're back together again. Oh, and by the way, this old record player is in a real wooden case. Unlike this one, it's in some fiber board or cardboard or whatever the heck that junk's made out of. Okay, now the parts you've been waiting for. You, you want to hear how these things sound, I bet. So let me satisfy your craving right now. Okay, we're down here in the shop with the Crosley where we won't disturb anybody. Although no louder than this thing gets, I doubt it would disturb anyone in the house. And that's as loud as it gets. As you can tell, there's not a lot of bass there which you wouldn't expect out of two-inch speakers, but and it was kind of distorting a little whenever I turned the volume up. Now, I'll demonstrate what a 78 sounds like when played back with the supplied LP stylus. I found out the hard way that a man in love is always As you can hear, it plays, but there's a good bit of background surface noise and that, that's the volume wide open and it also sounds like this motor is trying to lose speed when played at 78 rpm and now the newcomb player with the same record Trouble. louder. I didn't even have it all the way up. And it sounds a lot better too. Okay, don't want to play much of that because I don't want to get dinged by the copyright police. And now the same 78 RPM record played with the proper 3 mil 78 stylus and not the LP stylus. As you can hear, that sounds about a thousand times better. Now just for fun, here's the same record with the LP stylus of the Newcomb player. You can tell it's not near as full and bold as with the uh, 78 RPM stylus. And if this were an older 78, like from the 30s or 40s, you could really tell the difference. Okay, now that you've heard and seen both record players, I think it's obvious which one's the best one. And now, I'm going to bring up a couple of points based on my last Crosley video. A common question is, well, if all these are so junky, then where can I buy a modern-day quality portable phonograph? 
Well, you can't. That's just the short answer. You can't. None of them made today are going to be of the quality that they were 40 or 50 years ago. I've actually heard of one Crosley model, the Crosley Collegiate, and I think YouTube member Chris Cuff uh, features one in one of his videos that actually uses a magnetic cartridge and he gives it good reviews, but I have not personally seen one of those record players. And I know Chris has been doing this a long time, so if he says it's a decent one, then I would take his word for it. But even though I doubt even that one is going to be as good as some of the older models, but it's probably better than the one I just showed you. If you want something good, the best thing you can do is get something vintage, like a record player like this, or for even better sound quality and longer lasting record life, get a component turntable and receiver from the 70s or 80s. They were made by Pioneer, Kenwood, Marantz, and the list goes on and on. You don't really want to fool with any of the modern plasticky USB turntables. Those things are pretty junky. They still make modern day component turntables that are actually good, but you're not going to get them at the big box stores. They're only available through outfits that specialize in audiophile grade stuff, and you're going to pay hundreds if not thousands of dollars for such a turntable. So the best way to get by on the cheap is get something vintage, have it restored, and enjoy it. Now that brings another point to mind. Many people have said, well, I don't know how to work on the stuff, or there's no one close to me who will repair stuff. Well, I understand that. But a lot of this stuff is not difficult to maintain, and if you get some instruction by watching some YouTube videos and doing some online research, you can maintain this equipment. Or if you still don't feel like you can maintain your equipment, you know, there are plenty of online vintage electronics repair shops that's, that will repair this stuff, but you'll have to ship it. You know, I realize most repair shops, what few are left, don't want to touch anything vintage. You know, they only want to work on something that they can swap a board in and have it fixed in 30 minutes or less. You know, a lot of them are not too good on component level troubleshooting. Okay, I think I've about covered all the bases on the Crosley record player and why you should not buy one. And, you know, if you still have one and you're in love with it, well, you know, more power to you. That's, that's your privilege. But a lot of people don't realize how junky these things are, and they spend a hundred or more dollars on them. And then they're sadly disappointed when they get them home, and they either sound like crap and or they break in six months, and no one can repair them. These older machines are a lot more repairable than this new junk is. And before I leave, I'll show you some older school record players that I just got in that are on the list to be restored. This is an Audiotronics tube type school record player from 66. It uses a single 69 Compactron tube. And here's a Califone 1430K solid state record player from 1977. This is the type we had whenever I was in elementary school during the 80s. Nice blue cabinet in good shape. And here's a Newcomb tube type record player and PA system from I believe 1971. This will play up to 16 inch records and we'll get that one going real soon. Has a big 12 inch speaker in the lid. Okay, we're about out of time for this video, so thanks for watching. I hope you learned something from this, and more to come later. And one thing I've noticed about buying and selling vintage items, I can list vintage restored items for sale here until the cows come home and people ignore them. I guess they think because it's old, it's inferior, and it's going to burst into flames or something. But yet I can put something like this piece of crap Crosley up for sale. And within 30 minutes, someone claimed it, which is exactly what happened last night. Uh, part of me doesn't like to sell junk like that, but the other part of me says if that's what they want, then have at it. But for the most part, people around here don't want anything that they cannot text on or something that doesn't have an LCD screen on it.